Hey, so this one's about the copy open trades button. When you go to copy someone, there's always this little box, uh, copy open trades, and this is just about what that does. Um, so let's go here to the, this, I'm on the copy people page, and here's Wesley. So let's go to Wesley. So, uh, we're used to this, we normally see his profile, we have like the feed, the stats, the portfolio, charts, all the normal buttons you'll see on someone's profile. Here, top right, we have the copy button. So we press the copy button and we come to this screen. Now we're all familiar with the screen, I think. Uh, there's the amount I can copy them with, there's the uh, stop copy. Um, so the stop copy is different from a stop loss. A stop loss uh, controls the individual trades uh, that you make when you're manually trading. You can set a stop loss. Uh, the people you're copying often set stop losses. This is different, this is a stop copy. Um, which means that basically if the copy amount ever falls below uh, an amount you've specified, like he loses 10% or he loses 50% or then stop the copy automatically. It's a safeguard. So there's that, there's the stop copy. Down here is the button we're interested in, copy open trades button. Now by default, when you come to this copy screen, uh, it'll be ticked. So it's sort of the normal thing is to copy open trades. Um, we'll start though with what happens if you don't copy open trades. So let's say you don't copy open trades. What does that mean for you? All right, so first you've got to understand what an open trade means, okay? So an open trade is basically any trade which is still active, okay? A closed trade means um, you're in a trade, you've either made as much profit as you want, so you close the trade, you stop it, or you're losing too much money and you don't want to lose more, so you want to stop that trade, you close the trade. So open trade, still active. Closed trade, it's happened in the past. It's finished with and we moved on to another one. When I first started doing this, you know, I, I had always heard people say, if I heard someone say, yeah, I'm gonna sell Apple. What I thought that meant is that they owned a bunch of Apple stocks and they wanted to get rid of them, either because they were losing too much money or because they'd made lots of money, so they were gonna sell Apple. It's not what it means, um, at least not when you start trading, when you hear people talking. To sell Apple, means you take out a, a position, you do a trade where you're betting the value of Apple is gonna drop and that's how you wanna make money. It's called a sell position or a short selling a stock. And the other one is called a buy position where you think that, that it's gonna go up in value and that's how you're gonna make money. So anyhow, we don't say, oh, I sell Apple, doesn't mean I sold my stocks. It means stocks I already had, it means something else. So you open a position, means you do a new trade, uh, when there's an open position, it means that trade's still happening. When you close the position, that's when you finish it and you either take your money or you stop the losses and move on to the next one. So, in his portfolio, we go to his portfolio, Wesley, and we can basically see a list of all of his open trades. That's what you see when you look at someone's portfolio here. So all the ones in red, these are all active at the moment. He opened them in the past and he still hasn't closed them. He's either waiting because they've gone down in value. All the red ones have gone down in value. He's losing money on the red ones. All the green ones here are going up in value. He's made money on the green ones. With the red ones, he's either um, waiting, he's waiting basically to see if it'll turn around and it'll go back up again. You know, most stocks, they don't go just completely down or completely up, they sort of go like this. So he's probably watching that and thinking, all right, that's gonna go up. So anyhow, these are his open trades, trades that are just active. So let's say we haven't clicked the copy open trades button in the copy screen. That means that all of these trades that he's in, we're not gonna come into these trades with him. Uh, it means that these are the things he's currently doing, so we're gonna disregard these, and the next trade which we're gonna copy is the next trade that he opens after we started the copy. So we click copy now, and let's say he opens a new trade in an hour. We'll copy that one. We just won't copy any of these, okay? Um, now, one of the things that is a bit of a problem with this, and people, maybe get confused by. <clears throat> when you're trading, um, you try and generally uh, have most of your money used in trades, because it's your money which really makes you more money. Uh, it's weird that, because we buy things, we buy Apple, we sell Tesla, we, we have all these things, and but really my actual money is my real asset, you know? I mean, there's times now where I'm sort of stuck in trades and I, uh, I wish I wasn't, but they're down, and I'm sort of just waiting. Instead of selling them at a loss, I'm waiting until they go back up. But every single day they sit there with me waiting. I could be using that money in a better trade to make more money, but I can't, I'm stuck. And it really highlights the importance of this. Your money is your primary asset when you're trading. 
Um, so most people when they're trading, they want to have most of that money working for them. They want to have it in open trades, making money for them. Why I say that is when you copy someone and you don't copy open trades, that person you're copying most probably has most of their money tied up in open trades. It's always good to keep some of your money back um, in case there's a great opportunity so you have some extra money so you can go in on that one. Or if you have a stop loss which you need to extend so you have to use some of that money to guarantee your stop loss. But generally people will use most of their money in active trades because their money is what makes them more money. So if you don't copy the open trades, the next trade Wesley makes, we're going to wait because I didn't copy open trades. We're going to wait and we're only going to copy trades, his new trades. Thing is, he is probably going to have to close one of these old positions before he opens a new one. So if I go to his statistics here, look, if I go to Wesley's statistics, we see the normal things, his performance. Here we see the risk scores and the copiers, his trades. At the bottom here, you see this one, 3.76 trades per week. What that means is basically, on average, Wesley makes 3.76 new trades per week. He opens 3.76 new trades per week. So really you can do the maths on that and you can look at it. His portfolio, these are his open trades. We can probably bet that if we copy him now, we don't click copy open trades, 3.76 times per week, he will start to use some of that money because he has to owe oh, some of that money we've copied him with. Do you see what I mean? Because he has to close one of his old positions and then open a new one. That's the one we'll copy. So a bit of our money will be used in that. So if we look here, um, at what he's invested. Let's say the first one, AMD. He's bought AMD. This is the proportion of his money that he's used in that trade. So he's uploaded, say, $1,000, yeah? He's used 8.69% of that in an AMD trade. He's currently losing 15.74%. The value currently that makes it 7.20 because it's that minus that much equals that. So 8.69%. If you look at them, None of his trade, that's a big one. He's used 8.6% of his money on that trade. That's quite a big one. If you go down, look, he's using 3.9% of it on Ripple. He's using 1.49% on First Solar. So when he makes a new trade, we can sort of say it might be roughly around that, maybe 5%. So if he makes one next week, that'll be like, the next trade he makes will be the first one that we use some of our copy money with him. If that makes sense. So basically, uh, he'll open a new trade. It will probably be about 5% of his money, which would be, um, let's say we've copied him with uh, a thousand. Okay, we've copied him with it, which is a lot. I don't know, but let's say we've copied him with a thousand. That means he would use uh, 5%, $50 of our money on that new trade. So whilst we've copied him with a thousand dollars, we have to wait for him to close old trades and open new ones to start using up that money in active trades and that may take a few weeks until all of the money we've copied him with actually is being used by him trading for us you see so sometimes people do they don't click copy open trades and the first few weeks you've got to be warned can be quite slow I mean you might just be waiting depending on how much the trader you're copying trades and how often he opens new trades you might be waiting you know three weeks a month you know something like that could be less, could be more, until he starts to use your $1,000 or whatever it is in actual open new positions. And he'll take it a bit at a time, $50 there, maybe he opens 10%, uses $100, maybe he opens another 55% uh, one, there's another $50, that's $200 of your money so far is being used in active open trades. So be aware of that. Now the way you can see that um, is, let's say I go to my portfolio, and let's say I go to Jay. Here's all the trades that I'm copying in Jay. So Jay's opened all of these trades for me. I haven't done any of this manually. I'm copying him. So he's, these trades are all open. And if we go down to the bottom on the left, you can see here total open 272.28. That is the amount of the money I've copied him with, which is currently being used in open trades. Okay. So you can check this. If you want to, if, if it's, if you've copied someone, and you know you've copied them with $1,000 and it's going very slow. You don't seem to see a lot of profit. You're not sure what's going on. Go to your portfolio, click on that trader's name, go to the bottom and on the left, find this total open bit and see how much of the money, how much of your $1,000 is actually in open trades. Now, it might be that he's not doing very well and he's just not making you a lot of money or it might be that there isn't, hasn't been enough time yet 
that your money is actually being used in active trades. It will. It will catch up. And once it's caught up, it will stay caught up, you know. It just takes a while to get that going sometimes. Right, the benefits of not copying open trades. I mean, when I started, uh, it seemed to me like it was really sort of a way to have a clean slate. I don't know about his past trades. I don't want any part of that. I just want to see what he does from now on. Um, initially, I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Now, I mean, it depends. It really depends on the trader, on what they're doing, on you know what I think about them. But I'm not sure about that anymore. But it's a way. It's it's valid. But it might take a while for it to start up or to really get going. All right. The other way we can do that is to uh, copy the open trades. So let's say we go back to Wesley again. We click copy and we copy open trades. So what will happen then? So when we copy open trades, we go back to his portfolio and we can see all these stocks that we looked at before. These are all uh, Wesley's currently open trades. We're going to copy all of them. All right. So again, we look at the first one. It's AMD and he's buying an 8.69% of his money he used for AMD. What will happen straight away is that we will make a trade with 8.69% of our money that we've copied him with. So let's say that we've copied him with $100, just easier because of the decimal. So we've copied him with $100, that means we'll use $8.69 on a trade with AMD and we'll be buying it. Same thing, same proportion, same everything. What's different is that if you look at the price, we will always open those trades with the current market price. You know, uh, eToro doesn't go back in time for us or start skewing things and it doesn't open our trades at the same price the person we're copied opens. It can't do that. It has to open them at the market value now, the current market value. So if you look at AMD, he's actually got one, two, three, four, five, six open trades with AMD. When you see it in the portfolio, it groups them all, you know, it has AMD. But if you click into AMD, you'll see all the little sub trades which he's actually made. Normally when these people trade, when good traders trade, they don't just say, right, I'm going to buy AMD, AMD, I'm going to put all my money on it right now. That's what I did last time with Rad and got in trouble. They're not doing that. They don't say I'm going to put all my money on it in one go. There's my huge bet. They'll buy a bit and wait. And if it's going up, they'll buy a bit more. And if it's going up, they'll buy a bit more, maybe use more leverage. And so they go into trades slowly and generally come out of them slowly as well. So that confused me in the beginning. Why are there six? You know, so that's what they're doing. They have one overall AMD position, but in that they've got lots of trades building up or out of a trade. So he's he's bought this one uh, 28 from the six. So two months ago, he bought AMD at 1356. It's gone down since then. Next to it, you can see the current price here. Currently, AMD is at 1220. So it's gone down. So look, he's losing money. He's lost 21%. And as it's gone down, boom, 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 boom. The most recent one here is uh, the 11th of August. He's bought it at 12.01. It's now 12.19, so he's he's made money. If we open, if we copy him, we copy Wesley and we copy open trades, it will copy all these amounts. This is 1.24% of his uh, amount, the money he has is on that trade. 0.99% of the money is on that one, 1.49. We'll copy those exact proportions but we will open them all, all of these numbers would instantly be this number here, that we would buy them all at the current market value, okay? And that would happen for all of his trades. What are the benefits of this one? So if you look at, this is a bit counterintuitive. I remember when I first started, sometimes I'd see people, you know, on their profile, on their feed, if you go to their feed, sometimes here, look, they have this little bit about them. Always copy open trades to get the best benefit, blah, 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 blah. Um, Sometimes I'd see on traders, you know, if I'm in the red, copy open trades. And I used to think, well, what, what's the sense in that? I don't want to copy anyone who's losing money. Why would I copy a losing position? Because I didn't quite understand how that worked. If here, here, he's at um, minus 15.61% on that trade. What that means is when he bought AMD, it was say here, okay? The price went down and AMD is now at this price. So he's lost this money, because ah, he thought it was going to go up. It was a buy position and it's gone down. He's lost money. If I copy those trades when he's in the red, he's lost money, I will actually be buying at a lower price than him. So it's a better trade than he makes. If he's in the red and I buy it, I buy it at the cheaper price. Now he's betting that it's going to go back up. That's why he hasn't closed the trade. He's kept the open trade because he's basically, Wesley's betting that AMD's going to go back up. Most likely will, huge company, good good call. But he's betting it will go back up. He's bought it here. He'll start making profit when it's above that. 
If I copy him and he's in the red, I buy at the lower price. By the time it gets to here, I'll be making much more profit than Wesley. So that's kind of the good thing. On the other side, his Apple trade is 5.60 in he's actually making profit. So I will, that means that he bought here and now the market is here. So he's made this much profit. If I copy the open trades, I will actually buy here. So I will buy at a slightly worse price than it. Damn it. So if you look at it, there's there's red and there's green and there's red, 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 green, green, red, green, 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 green. It's a bit of a mixed bag, you know? Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So you've got to sort of weigh that up and say, all right, um, am I going to make money overall and lose? And that's a lot of maths. To put your mind at rest, here's, look, firstly, if there's someone where all of the trades are in red and you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to copy this guy because all of the trades are in red. I'm just going to buy everything at a lower price. Watch out that he's not buying companies like that Rite Aid I bought where they're just going down for seven months and they might go to zero. You've obviously got to be a bit sensible. If someone's losing hundreds of percent on every trade and they're in red, maybe look for someone else. Maybe actually find someone where they're not just completely making losses. But um, if you do see some losses and you do see some, some greens and you're worried and you can't do the maths, you know, I look at Wesley first of all because overall um, 87.65 do you know what I mean? So you look at his overall stats, 7.5% profit 2015, 148 in 2016, 36 so far. And if you look at this, when he's made uh, wins, his wins are winning. And when he's making losses, he knows how to do risk management. So his, his losses are small, that's good. If he does start losing, he manages to contain it. So really don't, you know, to start worrying too much about the maths of should I copy open trades? Am I in profit or loss? And most of them winning, most of them losing. Really, it's never going to be um, on these individual trades that you either, it makes you or breaks you. When you copy a, a trader, you're not relying on one huge trade to sort of make everything okay. And sort of you have to work out all these minute maths. You copy someone, really you look at their overall statistics and overall are they making money? Overall, are they losing money? Overall, is this person someone I trust? Um, it's never going to be one big trade that makes it or breaks it. It's going to be lots of small, clever, consistently made trades. So this, whilst it is, you know, oh, I could do the maths and work out if overall I'm going to be in profit or loss, not that relevant because you're looking at how they trade over time. Uh, so those are the those are the major differences really. Um, and it's up to you which one you do. I, I know I've changed my strategy all the time. The only thing which I think is a bit sometimes I see people asking people they're copying this question. It would have been useful for me to know because it's very frustrating. Is that that part about if you if you don't copy open trades, be aware that it might be a few weeks before the the person you're copying closes their old trades and is opening new ones because you're only going to be copying the new trades they do, and therefore it's going to take a while to use up that money you've copied them with. So it's a bit unfair on the person you're copying if you don't know that and after sort of two, three weeks, you're still thinking, man, they're not making any money for me. You know, go and check that thing I showed you in the portfolio. See how much of your money is actually being used. If all the money you've copied them with is being used and it's still really not going anywhere after a couple of months, maybe look at copying someone else. But, you know, be aware of that because it's a bit unfair and, and that's not explained anywhere. And once I worked it out, I thought, oh, damn, because there's been a few people where I copied and then after like five weeks I thought, well, they're not doing anything. And really it's because they didn't uh, open new trades very fast as a trader. And it would have been useful if I'd known that before. So that's it.